Hey guys, Philosopher here, and welcome to FGC Philosophy. Uh, this is where I talk about topics that I believe are important or can help us continue this conversation moving forward, whether we level up inside or outside the virtual arena. Uh, today's topic is one that was brought to my attention by a friend of mine. I saw it on uh, social media, and it was an article talking about Rowan Atkinson, the actor that plays uh, Mr. Bean, had some things to say about uh, cancer culture. Now, I've I don't know if I've been online vocal about cancer culture and how I feel about it, but I've I've definitely been having a lot of conversations about it lately, uh, and I think that the article was a good catalyst for having a continued conversation. So it's not necessarily a reaction or just a commentary on it, but more so just using uh, the article as a way to talk about a topic that I have some concerns about, but I also think is very valid. So that said, we'll get into that topic in just a second. I just, for the podcast version, want to give you guys some updates on just where I'm at right now. I think I need to continue using this podcast as a way to update the listeners on what's going on with my own personal journey, whether that be personal or professional. And I want to continue doing that for the sake of accountability, uh, but also because I think it helps other people in the challenges that they're having as well. So, uh, that said, the first thing is probably I've been stressing a lot about the, the monthlies that I've been planning. Uh, there's still a lot of things that I don't want to talk about just yet in terms of the, the scale of it eventually, but uh, what I can say is that we had to postpone our first one due to a lot of confusion. That was partly my fault. Uh, I'll, I mean, I'll take all the accountability for it because I think everyone um, in our community, you know, I'm the one that... that is the the leader so to speak so i think the leader has to take responsibility for any mistakes that are made for anybody else uh, in that organization and, but it was nothing major it was just a lot of confusion uh and there was a lot of people in our uh, tournaments that don't speak very good english <laughs> um so it wasn't it was just like a combination of a lot of weird things that happened but uh, i I've, i'm excited about it but i've also been very nervous about it because i'm a perfectionist and so it's very hard sometimes to subside that feeling of everything having to be the best possible way it can be and, and not being satisfied with where I currently am. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I postpone the monthly tournaments. Those are going to be $10 uh, to enter. They're going to have a $100 prize bonus for first place, but also half the registration fee goes towards the pop bonus for first, second, and third place. So I'm really excited to be able to pay out more people, potentially be able to start paying employees as well for helping out and volunteering. Uh, I, I don't necessarily want to make a business out of running tournaments, but I do want to be able to reward people for doing um, you know, for volunteering, for putting in their time, for for any help that I've gotten over the years. And so I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of all the people who help out in the Kalamazoo FGC, and I want to find a way to, to show appreciation. It might not always be money, but if I have the opportunity, I'd like to make that happen. You know, not a full-time job or anything like that, but just some compensation for the time put in. I, I believe people deserve to get compensated for their time, uh, even if they don't do it with the intention of getting paid. So that is one thing that's on my mind. Um, coaching business is continuing to grow. I'm trying to figure out my own coaching style now that I have enough. I feel like I have a good amount of data to be able to continue structuring my coaching style and, and my coaching coaching mesh and my coaching method. So I'm trying to figure that out. I can't fully articulate it. I haven't been able to write down and organize the ideas behind this new method, but it's definitely one that I've been working on and thinking about and stressing about a little bit uh, and it's not just an esports and this is probably going to be two separate completely separate areas but there's there's a non-esports project that i'm working on and there's an esports project that i'm working on both dealing with uh grade school age students and and uh, non-profit organizations and other other organizations as well so it's something that i'm trying to figure out uh and and make good make better make the best that it can be so that i'm impacting multiple people at a younger age where they can be happier and more fulfilled in their own lives uh where i didn't really have that when i was a kid so that's that's something that i'm trying to figure out uh i'm making progress in it but i'm still being very hard on myself so i'm fighting that that imposter syndrome that pops up right this has nothing to do with the main topic but it's just something that's really really important to me is a lot of times in my life i've had to fight my feelings right i basically there's times where it's like i don't feel like doing this right now but you're going to do it anyway 
uh, and and not just in like going to your job, right? I think a lot of us is really easy to, to to flip on this switch where it's like, okay, I'm gonna force myself to go to work and do this thing. I'm not really into it. I don't really like it, but I just it's an obligation I have to do. Uh, but when we have free time and we have our own personal projects and, and our own personal passions, for some reason we're more lenient on ourselves. And, and I've been trying to treat myself more like a boss and an employee, so that I don't half-ass or I don't. Uh, what's like dilly dally? I can't think of a term for it. But uh, essentially, when I'm when I'm on the clock for myself, I'm making sure I'm on the clock for myself. I'm making sure I'm setting aside time where I'm on the clock for myself in the first place, so that I don't confuse game time with work time. So I don't I don't waste time working on on stuff that I don't need to be working on in that moment, or thinking about things I don't need to be thinking about in that moment. And even if I don't feel like doing the thing, usually it's editing. Usually it's editing. Uh, but I'm trying to force myself to do things that I don't want to do. And that's, that's a continual thing. That's a lifelong experience. I think it gets easier and easier over time. And as there's, there's more things that you're less excited to work on, if you, if you have that kind of mindset, uh, I, it became a lot easier for me, but moving back to Michigan and a lot of other things, battling, you know, ongoing depression, but you know, coming out on top as much as possible. These are things that are, are sometimes continual for some of us, uh, you know, for for many of us, it is a journey of overcoming mental, emotional, and sometimes physical pain. And that pain may not go away, but we can learn to be more tolerant of it so that we are more happy. Uh, or we may, you know, if it's a physical, if it's an emotional or psychological pain, we learn to have a new perspective to where it's not painful anymore. You know, like stress, like like things that make us upset, like being a perfectionist. There's there's ways, I don't mind being a perfectionist because it makes me strive to do my best. When I do mind it is when it causes me to be stressed or depressed, right? That's, that's the part that I'm trying to avoid because I like having high expectations because it makes me work harder. However, once it becomes toxic, that's the issue. So those, those are things that are on my brain. Of course, you know, the, the dad life is it's a continual challenge. I'm appreciative of it, but it is definitely a hard and new challenge that I'm trying to figure out and have not anticipated a lot of things. Uh, I'm being purposely vague just because I want to think more on that. Maybe I'll do a whole topic on just parenting and where I'm at now with a two-year-old. Uh, they talk about the terrible twos, and I, I understand why they call it that. I still don't think that's a, a, a term I'm going to really familiarize myself with. Uh, within like my family's conversation, but I, I understand and relate with it a little bit better than I used to. Um, but yeah, so it's it's something that I'm trying to figure out, and and it's it's so parenting is so weird because you're trying to raise this little human being, and they're not fully like sentient at such a young age. You know, at two years old, they're aware, they're thinking, they're learning. You know, they're I would say they're sentient, they're self aware, but there's so many quote unquote common sense things that they don't know yet that they have to rely on you even if they don't want to rely on you that it's, it's just a uh they're, they're coming into their own at such a young age and they're figuring out hey i'm my own person i have my own wants and needs but they don't know how to communicate that properly they don't know how to communicate that uh always healthily not healthily what's a better term it, nicely <laughs> you know sometimes little kids can be insensitive or unaware of of their parents feelings and and definitely i'm i still have feelings i'm definitely not a robot so my kid even though he is young and even though i know he doesn't mean any better and doesn't mean even though he's way younger than me and doesn't mean ill there's still things that can get on my nerves there's still things that can be offensive in the moment you have to catch yourself you know as an adult you have to catch yourself when you are not being emotionally efficient if that makes sense you're you're, you're getting affected by things that that don't you you don't need to be getting affected by you don't need to be getting mad about because you know a kid if they they spit or they spill something they're not doing it with hatred in their heart more than likely they might get joy out of it because it's it's funny you react in a funny way or the the something you don't understand is exciting to them uh but it's not as as simple as just my kid is being mean and i'm mad at him because he's being a bad kid and not listening to me and disrespecting me like a lot of parents feel disrespected by like two-year-old kids and it's like two-year-olds can't even perceive the concept of, of respect at such a young age for you to even feel disrespected but some people think that way some people are like respect is a very big thing for them and their perception of someone else respecting or not respecting them either way that's an aside that's that's kind of where i'm at with but that's where i'm at with with parenthood um me and my wife are always trying to talk and, and 
and learn and grow. There's frustrations that we both have that we express with each other, uh, but we try to just continue to learn and make the best of it, talk about it, be objective about it, give each other feedback, even when it's not, um, even when it's not received well, we still try to share that feedback as best as possible, which I appreciate. I'd rather her, you know, hurt my feelings temporarily and tell me something that I need to hear versus, uh, you know, trying to spare my feelings and, and not giving me that constructive criticism that I, I, I want, right? So I appreciate that we have that kind of relationship where I can get that feedback. Outside of that, it's been a lot of fighting game stuff. If you have not played the beta for Guilty Gear Strive, I am sorry. I, I am not a Guilty Gear player, first off. So for those who don't play fighting games and you, and you listen to this podcast, Guilty Gear is an anime style 2D fighting game that recently um, has a new version of the game coming out, right? And there's a beta or an, like a play test that, that you can play and allows you to try it out. And so you know, I, I had been looking into the old ver- versions of the game, learning more about it. I know this version was supposed to be like way different from all the other versions. So there's such a weird dynamic. So personally, my personal view, I, I love the gameplay. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about with netcode, the netcode was pretty good. There was times where I encountered lag, but instead of the match getting ruined, it kind of just paused the match temporarily while they tried to resync the connection, which was interesting. That's confusing in its own way, but I think that, that I would prefer that rather than wondering if I'm lagging or like, like I know that lag is here and I understand it and I don't have to like rematch or anything like that. But when like Street Fighter lag, it's way more frustrating because it just snaps back sometimes and it's, it's just not, it's not uh, enjoyable. But the game, I love it. The character I've been playing so far is Nago Ryuki. I'm really enjoying that character. I'm afraid that I'm going to get like locked into this character if I don't try some other character soon, but he's just fun. And I feel like there's so much stuff that I want to figure out before I switch to another character that it's kind of like he's helping me understand the mechanics of the game because his execution is pretty easy in my opinion. He doesn't have any like double jump air game stuff. He's like all on the ground, big swords, big buttons. Uh, I love the representation. He looks really awesome. He's a black vampire samurai. Like, think about that for a second. A black vampire samurai. What? Huh? (laughs) That's so cool. The character design is so cool. He has this really cool helmet that comes off and goes on. Like, the character is just really great for me. So I've thoroughly been enjoying the game. I feel like I've been doing pretty well at it. Uh, I'm excited for it. I I have some concerns about some of the other things outside of the gameplay and the netcode itself. But overall really fun game I, I recommend it if you're curious about learning guilty gear if you're a street fighter player this is probably the closest to street fighter i think this is like street fighter 4 like if street fighter 4 continued to advance i could see it going in the, the direction of guilty gear strive I, I don't know if that makes sense or if that's crazy but i i think with like the red fadcs and stuff like that uh guilty gears roman cancel system feels like a like a way more advanced version of that but it's, it's, it also feels like almost how you use x factor sometimes in marvel vs capcom to in, like to like you you whiff a button like a big button or like you throw out a special and you know it's going to miss you x factor cancel and you're able to block or you're able to like continue your pressure or something like that uh red roman roman cancels work that way as well it it, it it's kind of like a bunch of different defensive mechanics from other games kind of wrapped up into one weird uh contextual tool and so it's really interesting and i know it's different from the other iterations i don't know how different it is it seems like it has the same general idea but it also has the whole drift mechanic where you can move in any direction uh, any four directions up down left right while roaming canceling and slowing down time it's really weird really interesting and then of course street fighter street fighter 5 the new patch came out everyone's trying to figure it out ban just came out i made my alternate account and i'm going to try to grind my way to gold so if you're if you don't follow my youtube channel i i do plan on putting the the journey on youtube so that'll be kind of interesting just my my rank matches and maybe some thoughts and, and ideas about it along the way i really wanted to do something similar with kareen but i never got around to figuring out how that was going to look so unfortunately i have like a tons of gameplay footage maybe i'll just do like a retrospective or what we're thinking about you know some commentary on my matches and my experience playing kareen thus far since i made her to gold my my goal right now is to make her to platinum which has been way harder but i haven't put as much time in that i used to put in so it's like now i gotta make sure that i'm putting in that time 
So that said, that's a little bit about me. I just really felt like these last few episodes I've been enjoying, but really focusing on the conversation and the piece itself, and not so much on the personal aspect of my podcast, and I, I missed that. So that said, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on what's going on with me, a little bit more of the personal touch that I have not been doing in some of these later podcasts, and uh, just showing my appreciation for you, the listener, for being there, for reaching out to me, for you know letting me know when these podcasts help you out or get you to think about something i'd love the conversations afterwards and i'm going to continue to talk about topics that interest me sometimes they're going to be fighting game related sometimes they won't but either way i appreciate the support and i hope you enjoy the show What's up guys, Philosopher here, and I have another topic I wanted to discuss. If you've been following me lately, then you know I've been covering a lot of social and political topics, uh, and it's hard for me to not talk about it, so we're going to do it again. We have another uh, article here that talks about the actor Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson, compares cancel culture to a medieval mob. And I know a lot of people feel one way or the other about that. I'm sitting somewhere in the middle, so I want to discuss some of the topics, some of the key points that he talks about in this article. So let's get right into it. In this article, I got some highlighted points. This is an app I'm using, it's called Evernote, uh, but I just wanna go over a few things, right? Talk about a few topics and share my thoughts along the way because I feel like the issue with this is that people feel one way or the other about cancel culture or accountability culture, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and uh, we wanna, I wanna dig into this, right? So first off, the first thing he says, in this article uh, from Radio Times, not familiar with them. And keep in mind, this guy is not in America. If you don't know who Mr. Bean is, he's a very iconic character. Uh, He's from the UK. So this is more of an American thing or more of a a UK situation, but I do still think it applies to American culture because cancel culture isn't exclusive to America. Uh, So it's not like he, he lives in a bubble and doesn't see it happening. It happens online. So it's kind of like its own little weird online nation where people interact with each other from different cultures anyways so it says cancel culture has become a digital mob i would agree with that to an extent Uh, i'm not saying that's bad or good yet i just think that objectively yes there is a mob mentality that happens uh when somebody does something and enough people feel angry about it enough people feel emboldened to do something about it regardless of whether that action is justifiable or not good or not uh, that does happen It's, it's hard to deny that but he continues to say cancel culture has made it hard for people to be exposed to a wide spectrum of opinion uh, and he's fearful of the future this is something that i absolutely agree with now there are times where i understand and see the point in wanting to cancel uh, a lot of people uh, try to discredit them try to uh, make their public image so that people don't want to hear them de-platform them right i i don't necessarily agree with this but it seems like It's hard to explain from my point of view because it seems like there's a lot of people who want to de-platform other people who are scary and might potentially cause harm to others. And with the existence of Donald Trump, I personally understand that concern, right? It's a reality where one person can become so influential that they uh, cause basically an attack. You know, you can argue whether or not it was his fault, uh, but he definitely had an involvement in it. He definitely emboldened it, right? Um, he wasn't there to do it. He didn't, you know, partake in the in the stuff, but there are people fighting in his name, right? So I, I don't think it's hard to really deny that. I don't really want to get into semantics and argue whether that is or isn't the case. I would say that unless you're living uh, with your head in the sand, yeah, that's very, very possible. However, I do personally think it's very, very dangerous when we aren't allowing people to have their voices be heard and allowing their voices to be heard unfiltered, right? That's that's incredibly important because what happens is somebody says something and then a, a media outlet, whether it be a, a traditional news outlet or a YouTuber or an article, they filter that information. They create a narrative that may not have already been there and they create their own story that goes along with it and it, it, it changes how people perceive it. It's like, you ever have a friend who, who warns you about somebody, it's like, hey, watch out for this person right here. They're this kind of person, you know? And you, you have that in your mind and you're already judging that person based off of the input that you got from somebody else. And then have you ever been wrong when that happens? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. I know I have in the past where I have a friend or an acquaintance that's like, hey, watch out for this coworker, watch out for this person. They're a bad person. You get to know them on your own. And it's like, I, I think there might've been a bad interaction or some bad blood, or maybe my friend is actually the one that's in the wrong, you know? That's hard for a lot of people to admit because you're biased towards somebody 
somebody and biased against somebody but the person that you're biased against might be the person in the right they may have been a good person but just rub that friend the wrong way or rub that coworker the wrong way and now they're trying to infect your opinion of this person so that you don't become an ally to that person because they already have a preconceived feeling towards that person that definitely definitely happens if you've never lived in high school if you've never existed in the high school world that happens as adults as well and that's the kind of stuff that i'm concerned about is that people are trying to convince you of how someone else is without you being able to make that choice on your own without unfiltered information without being able to access that person and hearing their words for themselves now obviously there's liars there's manipulators and stuff like that but my concern is that we're supposed to be capable human beings of making our own opinions and making our own choices but somehow other people feel I don't know exactly what they feel, but they feel like they have the the entitlement to decide whether or not I have the right to hear what someone else says, right? I, I don't believe in that. If I want to make my own decisions on if someone is crazy or not, I will listen to their opinion. I don't need you to tell me whether or not somebody is a bad person or a good person. So that, that's the issue that I have, is that we, we are stifling certain types of conversation before it happens. Now, I, I think there is some sort of gray area there where sometimes like i'm really not a fan of flat earthers i i think that that kind of mentality where there's a currently existing science that most people accept like i don't mind people believing flat earth but i don't like the idea that they're living life as if flat earth is a real thing you have a theory you continue to test it until it's true but you live in a world where that isn't the reality that's just a theory you're trying to test uh and the same thing happens with covid19 this pandemic where it's like okay enough people believe they have this worldview that's completely different from widely acceptable science and now they're acting on it right with flat earth it's not as dangerous right now because it's not really an issue it doesn't there's not really too many conflicts that happen from believing that the earth is flat currently um that could be a problem years and years and years in the future where this philosophy this mindset this ideology still exists and it may be more detrimental to the future the people in the future i don't know um, but currently, I don't see it as a threat, but I do see anti-maskers, anti-vax people as a threat to others in the general vicinity. Like, if you're an anti-masker, anti-vaxxer, and you're living in isolation from everybody else, I don't care. If you're an anti-masker, anti-vaxxer, and you're interacting with the general public and you're exposing people to a virus because of your personal beliefs, you're a danger. You might be a borderline terrorist, depending on how dangerous that virus that you're spreading around is. Right. So there's a there's an issue there where we're having these conversations, we're canceling certain kinds of people. And sometimes that's a good thing where it's like an anti-masker. I don't want to be close to you. If you're not going to wear a mask, you're breathing all up on me. You're a danger to me. You're not just making me feel bad or uncomfortable or offended. You are literally a danger to my life and the people around me. That's completely different from a, a, a flat earther, where it's the same idea. They have a belief that they feel is right and they feel like people are lying to them and they feel like the truth is not you know being exposed. But they're not hurting anybody being a flat earther but an anti-masker completely different let's see here it's important that we're exposed to a wide spectrum of opinion but what we have now is a digital equivalent of a medieval mob roaming the streets looking for someone to burn so it's scary for anyone who's a victim of that mob and it fills me with fear for the future the thing is that a lot of people are saying no this isn't cancel culture this is accountability we're holding people accountable However, I've seen several, several times where they do the, the cancel culture thing where they're attacking somebody and there's not enough information for them to make that accusation or they are acting on their feelings and not not fact. They're saying somebody says something that makes you feel bad and now you want to villainize that person. I, I have a huge issue where people start trying to de-platform, trying to make people lose their jobs because they say something that is offensive. I don't like it. If someone says something racist, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I think you're an asshole, right? Um, or if something... But the thing is that racism is such a nuanced topic. And just because someone says something that you perceive as racist doesn't make it true, right? If, I, if someone says to me, oh, I'm well-spoken... I could get mad and offended and yell and try to cancel this person because they're saying, oh, I'm I'm well-spoken for a black person. They didn't say that, but I heard that. And now I'm going to act on that thing that I heard. It might be true, but in their mind, it might be a genuine compliment. But it doesn't matter because I felt like they were being racist. Therefore, they are racist. Therefore, they don't need to be doing whatever they're doing. I'm going to cancel them. That absolutely does happen. That's a really over-exaggerated definition or a version of it. But that does indeed happen where someone feels a certain type of way 
uh, and they act on it. And I don't think, I think there are times where yes, people are being too sensitive. There are times where it's like, you need to just man up, be offended if you want, that's fine, but there's no need to go after this person and try to cancel them because they made you feel a type of way. Uh, I don't think that that is the way to go about it. You can call somebody out and say, hey, like you said this thing and made me feel like this, but don't beat around the bush and act like you weren't the one offended and try to be more self-righteous by saying, hey, this person is a racist and we need to deplatform them. If you feel a type of way, admit that. Don't act like that's not the thing and don't try to villainize somebody, right? You can try to have a conversation, maybe pull them aside and be like, hey, you know, you said this thing, but don't agree with it, yada, yada, yada. We need to have a discussion about this. Um, if they're a bigger ranking person and you can't get a hold of them, that's a whole different story. But I just think that people are really, really quick to deplatform somebody. And that's that's terrible. There's so many different reasons as to why someone might say something uh, that you don't agree with. Uh, and we're so quick to just cancel people. There are times where it's necessary. But uh, I think that most people aren't willing to have a conversation of the weird gray area. You're either pro cancel culture, anyone who isn't part of your ideology needs to get out, which I think is a very hypocritical way to see the world where you just cancel anybody who doesn't um, adhere to you and you're scared of their ideologies and you're afraid of them infecting other people's um, thoughts. That is a very real thing and a very legitimate concern. But I do think that you're not the thought police. You can't control how other people think and when we get to this weird line we're going to start controlling how people talk and think when you start controlling how people talk you also get into the line of how people think this is a whole another topic and this isn't get into this particularly so i don't want to dive too deep into that topic but it's just a concern that i have where people are trying to control language people are trying to control uh, certain things and um there are times where it's like hey there's certain words you just should not say we've kind of fully agreed on it let's just not use it but there's a, always a gray area where certain people are using it and now it still exists but there's kind of a, uh, I don't want to say elitist. It's just certain people can use a certain kind of word and certain people can't use that same word. And I don't really, I think that's it's hard to have that. It's hard to have that in a, in a perfect world where you're trying to uh, stop racism, but a word that is racist isn't racist if a certain kind of person uses it. Um, and then if another person does use it, then that's racist or hateful. And I, I understand it because uh, there is a word for us that we use that other people don't use it, but it, it that's a whole nother side that's a whole nother side let's move on let's get to the end of this article here the problem we have is that an algorithm decides what we want to see which ends up creating a simplistic binary view of society it becomes a case of either you're with us or against us and if you're against us you deserve to be canceled yeah i kind of touched on it already in terms of the the uh, algorithm that's a huge other part i recommend watching my or listening to my podcast on the social dilemma or, or watching a movie on netflix um i would recommend watching it first and then going back and listening to the conversation on fgc philosophy there are algorithms if you're on facebook if you're on youtube especially youtube uh, any sort of social media platform the this isn't like by evil design or anything. It's just the algorithm wants to keep you engaged, right? The the platform wants to keep you engaged. It's going to show you stuff that it thinks that you like. But more often than not, those things that, that they show you will also aid in changing your perception of the world or reinforcing your perception of the world because it's trying to show you things you agree with or you like or you relate to. So it's not so much like they're trying to brainwash you. It's just, hey, here's this piece of content that you like. Hey, here's this piece of content that you like. And it tends to be things that you already agree with or things that um, kind of reinforce what you believe or justify what you believe because it makes you feel good and facebook and youtube and twitter want to make you feel good so that you keep using their platform so there there is this part where you don't realize you're being brainwashed you don't realize you're being influenced by what you're seeing and your mind actually becomes very closed off to other ways of seeing the world because you're you're seeing a pretty big version of the world you know considering you're on the internet but it's still very one-sided because kind of like the universe society people are always growing expanding new cultures and things are always expanding and i think it's very hard to have conversations like i i, I don't want to get too much into it right now but there are different types of cultures that clash with other cultures because there's so much on the opposite ends of the spectrum but nonetheless uh, i just wanted to at least put something out there uh, i i've been thinking a lot about different kinds of content i appreciate the people who uh, who wait with me and and uh, watch my podcast or listen to my podcast i've been uploading it sporadically a couple of updates on those i have a few topics that i want to put out there's one on a movie called american sun i want to talk about that which deals with like racism and prejudice and stuff of that nature uh i interesting movie i recommend watching it because i will be talking about it on my podcast and then i have another one that deals with the my pillow guy <laughs> and that that one is a two-hour 
video that I'm covering, so I'm gonna have to chop that up a lot. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys as always. I love talking about these kinds of topics. If you agree, if you disagree, please leave a comment down below. We can start this conversation. Uh, if you do disagree and you're offended or you're bothered or you're triggered, one, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend you. Uh, I wanna have a conversation. Uh, if I do come off condescending or anything of that nature, if you feel like I come off that way, let me know. Um, I might not change my behavior, but I think it's important to know where you're coming from. Like, hey, you want to have a conversation about this topic, but I do feel like, you know, you came up condescending. So it's kind of hard to talk to you about this topic because uh, I don't want to come off that way. I want to be able to be approachable, talk about things. I want to disagree with people, right? I want to disagree respectfully and have a conversation from there. So let's do that in the comments section down below. What are your thoughts? Let me know. As always, I will see you all in the next one.